Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Dynamic HTML, or DHTML, allows you to quickly and easily apply effects and animation to objects and text in your website. With DHTML, you could create effects that had words fly off of the page when someone clicked them, or have a picture swap with another picture when someone rolled their mouse over it. There are many more possibilities in this, but these are just a couple of examples. All of these effects can be set using the DHTML effects toolbar. The available effects are different for text than they are for images. Also, the impressive DHTML effects are not visible in older browsers. You'll need to be using Internet Explorer or Netscape Navigator 4.0 or later to view these. On top of that, each browser renders the effects differently, so you should check how your page looks in multiple browsers. To display the DHTML effects toolbar, click View in the menu bar, roll over toolbars, and then click DHTML effects. To apply DHTML effects, select the text or graphic to which you would like to apply the effect. Then, you'll need to select an event trigger from the On dropdown. An event trigger defines what action should cause this effect to start. For this example, I'll choose Page Load. Your next step is to select an effect from the Apply dropdown. You can see there are several effects, and for this example I'll choose Fly In. Then, there may be an extra setting you'll need to set in the dropdown to the right. If there aren't, it will just remain grayed out. As you can see, for Fly In there are several effects. So I'll choose from top right by word. This will cause this block of text to fly in from the top right corner of my screen one word at a time. Now let's go ahead and preview this. Notice how the text is just flying in from the top right corner of the screen? Let's take a look at swapping an image, as this is one of the most popular DHTML effects used. For this example, I'll swap this image with another image. So first, click the graphic, then from the drop-down in the DHTML effects toolbar, select your event trigger. Again, you'll need to select an effect from the Apply drop-down, and then any additional settings. Once you select your picture, click Open. You don't need to worry about your images being the same dimensions. When you create a swap picture DHTML effect, both pictures are automatically the same size. Now let's go ahead and preview this again. Notice we still have our text flying in from the upper right corner of the screen, and if I roll my mouse over this picture, it swaps to a different picture. If you need to remove a DHTML effect, simply select the DHTML effect or the text or object with a DHTML effect applied to it, and then click the Remove Effect button in the DHTML effects toolbar. DHTML is also responsible for 
another great tool for positioning objects in a web page. With the positioning toolbar, you can set precisely where you want images in the page without having to resort to placing them in tables. To achieve this, DHTML places the objects in their own separate layer of the web page. You can even specify which layer it's in by assigning it a Z coordinate in the page. The higher the Z coordinate number, the further from the background of the page the layer is. It's worth mentioning that this is also something that older browsers cannot view and some current browsers cannot view reliably. Netscape and Internet Explorer can both view the positioning commands differently, so you should preview your page in both types of browsers to ensure that the browsers show the placements of objects in the positions you want them to. To display the positioning toolbar, click View in the menu bar, roll over toolbars, and click Positioning. To use the positioning toolbar, Click the object or block of text that you'd like to position absolutely and click the Position Absolutely button on the positioning toolbar. Once you do this, the text or graphic will be placed in its own layer. You should be able to see resizing handles around the outside border of the layer. You can then click and drag the new layer to the position at which you want it to appear. You'll notice that as you change the positioning of the layer on your page, the new coordinates automatically fill in to the positioning toolbar. If you'd like, you can use the fields on the toolbar to manually enter the coordinates of the layer. As we stated before, you can set a Z coordinate or Z index by clicking into the Z index field and changing the number. This will only have an effect if you have several layers in the page. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.